Real talk, man. Come on now. I ain't gotta do this song for you to realize this. Come on. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Um, my name is Plucky. I uh, grew up in Marysville. I went to school in Chico. Um, and then I went to LA for a little bit. Uh, and then I ended up coming back to Sacramento in this uh, area right here. So, Like as far as like doing music seriously, like I've always played around with music. I was, I was never really talented, but um, as far as like really being serious, I'd probably say like early 2000 is when I was like, okay, yeah, I'll start investing money into equipment and things like that so I think that's when it started getting really serious um well I'm currently back in school so that definitely takes you know a good portion of my time I felt like I wanted to go into uh, the medical field so going back to school for that um that's taken a good chunk of my time and then as far as just uh being at home uh, I you know I, I do look after you know my mom uh, so, you know, that takes like a good portion of my time too as far as just going to the hospitals and things like that, appointments with her just to make sure that she's doing okay. That takes up a little bit of my time as well, as well as, you know, like making time for football, um, just um, catching productions, and then with the, with the uh, uh, creation of LS Poets or Love Struck Poets, I mean, that takes a lot of time too because we, we have to shoot basically a new poet every two weeks. And so that takes like a lot of time out of my schedule. So I almost don't have time for anything. Let's do this, man. Yeah. See, my sister inspired me a lot. Um, I only have one sister, um, and uh, her name is Tal. Uh, she uh, she's very inspirational. She did a lot of things that I felt like you know. If she could do it, I could do it too. I mean, she got married at a young age. She was able to go through college and get her degrees in four years uh, with kids and a full-time job. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Like, I almost didn't graduate with, you know, no kids and barely a job. So, um, you know, I, I really look up to her and her achievements, and uh, you know, that that's something that really inspires me. I listen to a lot of of music. Um, I'm a Beatle influence. I'm a big John Lennon fan. Um, I, I listen to Queen, Freddie Mercury fan. Um, I listen to basically everything that I can get my hand on. Um, a lot of Hmong songs, definitely. You know, it, it did grow up in that KLS era, definitely, you know, so um, definitely Sounders as well. I mean, all those, you know, bands that we all grew up with, I mean, those were definitely impacts on my life as well. Um, as well as you know what I you know would listen to in the mainstream as well, and then uh, definitely some street jams as well. So I like to garden actually. Um, I like to grow trees, not the one you smoke, but you know actual like really trees. You know, so I, I used to hang out with my mom a lot, right? And I would always you know ask her just like random questions, like small talk, and like, hey, how do you grow that, or how do you grow that? And she's like, yeah, you gotta grow this during this season or that during that season. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought you just threw it in the ground and it grew. So I got a little bit more interested and then I found out about like, uh, like grafting trees and growing multiple fruits on one tree. And I was like, really? You mean I could grow a plum and like, you know, another fruit on one tree? And so, I don't know, I, I guess, you know, I, I'm a nerd, I guess, you know, so I started wanting to grow all these trees. Um, and just, you know, get into like that whole kind of, it, it kind of intrigued me a little bit, so. Cause we turn ghetto into the beauty even when they say If you rock the flip flops then you was a flop If you rock a red shirt then you was a slob And people talk the shit man like it was a job And if you're deep in the ride then you was the mob now you was Honestly I only have one album. Like I, I started pushing mixtapes out of my backpack. Um, we'd go to the Fresno of the Year and pass out CDs and you know, sell CDs to people in like little burn CDs and things like that. And, and I've pushed out a lot of mixtapes actually, um, where 
people would assume that I had, you know, hey, when they, whenever they see me, they'd be like, hey, when's your next album coming out? But really, you know, like, I never had one. Um, the first one I had was in 09, which was uh, actually called The Official Album. And the reason why it's called The Official Album is because everybody assumes that I have all these albums, but I don't. I only have really just that one. That one was like a project that I that took me maybe three years or so just to really put together. Um, I did a bunch of tracks for it, but I ended up throwing it out. And at the time, like the more that I did, and I would go back and listen to my older tracks, it just wouldn't satisfy me because the quality wasn't there. Uh, it, it all didn't mesh. But finally, you know, like I, I ended up picking out like songs that I did like and I ended up pushing out the official album. And that was my first album, which was back in 09, and that's still my only one. Um, but I am currently, you know, looking forward to working on another project. So. Some of the recent works include a lot of um, samples from the Hmong community itself, as far as just Hmong songs and things like that. Um, I don't think anybody's really doing that at the moment, so I think it'd be um, a step forward as far as um, progressing like the Hmong music itself to be able to not only sample from other forms of music but sample from the community itself. So. Um, I really don't want to give a timeline because uh, you know the, the thing with music is that it's, it's very um, it's emotional, right? So the thing is you know I, I do music when I'm in that specific mood only. So for me to say, you know, like, I'll, I'll have one by the end of 2013, it's probably not really realistic, but, um, like, I would say I plan to have one, like, or at least a good majority of it done this year, to where, like, if anything, if it doesn't drop this year, it would be next year. So, um, I do have a lot of it done already, and so it, it shouldn't be a problem getting it done, it's just a matter of uh, getting certain parts in, getting the, um, the rest of the songs put together. Um, I want to do, there's definitely, there's a lot of singers that I want to work with. Uh, definitely I have some Yami on the CD. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's a girl named Vanna Moore from the Midwest, very talented, like you, you, you can't touch her at all vocally. Um, you know, so we're working with her on some projects. Um, definitely a few local rappers. I know we have a track with James from the family. I know we have... Um, Pavu, uh, who was local in Sac uh, Sacramento here as well, but he is so he, he's he's very good as far as you know, like um, like the arts itself, and so that's just to name a few. But definitely, you know, like I am looking to. It's just whatever song comes up that will fit an artist that I want. Definitely, I don't want to work. Uh, the thing with me is that I don't want to work with one specific person because you end up the whole album ends up uh, sounding the same. So I want to work with different people to give the album different dimensions. Let's do this, man. Yeah. I, Josh and I were, were really good friends. Um, I think the one thing that people don't realize about him is he's he's actually pretty rooted in hip hop. He's a bit, uh, I, from what I remember, if if I'm not mistaken, he's. He's very, you know, Timbaland influenced as far as beat making and things like that. He makes some really quality music, and so uh, you know, I do work with him on that. Um, I did go to his house one day when he was uh, working on the um, the Outside the Box album, and he was like, "Hey, you know, I got this track right here. You know, do you wanna do you wanna listen to it? Maybe you wanna like do a verse to it?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, put it on or something like that." And he turned it on. And I was like, "Yeah, I can do it." You know. That, that's, that's a tight song, you know, so um, I have a buddy that I do music with, his name is uh, Sai. He's part of a, a non-profit uh, organization from Fresno and uh, he actually, he was visiting one day and he said, hey, you know what, I, I have a, you know, there's a commercial that I have to do, it, it, it would encourage, you know, like the, the youth to, uh, uh, to, to vote and to educate the youth to vote and um, he wanted me and he wanted like Josh to do it and so we had gotten together, put the video together with, you know, with uh, Starry Cloth Films and uh, it, it was a great experience to be able to uh, put that type of message out there. Definitely, if, I mean, if it's anything about, you know, encouraging the youth, anything to promote like a positive image within our community, I'm, I'm always down to help. I give out a shout out to um, 
definitely like a like everybody you know who's been really supportive like everybody always tell me hey how do you get all these things done and um, how do you come up with all these ideas but um, like I'm, I'm just a little part of it you know I'm surrounded by great people uh, definitely you know Lou over at Storycloth Films is a huge help it helps me in everything that I, I, I need as far as you know um, filming and uh, just getting those done uh, Tang from Fourth Dimension, a lot of the local artists, the family, um, and, and just everybody from the Midwest, Two Psych, um, the Hill Tribe people, Fresh Tau, everybody, you know, like uh, the dysfunctional family from Rhode Island, just basically everybody, you know, with this, this community, this arts community, you know, as far as, you know, even LP and CL and everybody else. Um, big shout outs to them. Uh, and and uh, Evolution Records, I actually, you know, Kong and Shu, definitely, they're they're a big you know portion of this community as well. So, uh, just shout outs to them, and definitely you know shout outs to Mudo for uh, uh, helping us uh, f uh, move forward this cause. So. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so I had this idea. Uh, like you know, I was like, oh, okay, I want to do something really positive. You know, I want. I want to be an outlet for the community because there's so many talents within the shadow that nobody knows about that needs an outlet, but they don't have the resources to go anywhere or you know get themselves out there. And I always had this idea where I wanted to help these people. And originally it started with kitchen production, but you know as it got you know like uh, as it got bigger and more complex with the business, I kind of lost the creative side of it as well as, you know, like my other partners that were involved. Um, and so, it, Kitchen Production was more of like entertainment, but Ellis Poet is more for the writing portion. So, um, not only does it deal with rappers, but anybody who is involved with creative writing, as far as, you know, spoken word, poems, just uh, songs, basically anything that has creative writing. and. Uh, and, and, it, I, and I called it Love Struck Poets because I used to have this roommate, his name was Joe, and we lived together in LA. And uh, one day we were, you know, he's a big hip hop fan, and one day we were like, you know, writing lyrics and stuff like that. And I remember he said, you know, uh, he, oh, in one of his lines he said, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm sicker than a love struck poet who goes to steal a rose out of a garden full of snakes, right? Um, and I was thinking to myself, like, damn, be like, okay, like, if you're love struck, like, you're definitely not, like, emotionally balanced. So you would do crazy things or things that are kind of out of the norm for things that you love, right? And so the reason why I chose love struck poet is because I, I believe that creative writing is is uh, generated through that state of where you're emotionally unbalanced. Um, that's how you create your your most you know like unique and uh, and and um, powerful and masterpieces is when you're in that state of mind. Whether it be you're very upset, you're angry, you love something, you know, or you know that's the state of mind uh, where you know that you're gonna do your best work. So love struck poet doesn't really refer to being in love, but it refers to being in the state of emotional like uh, imbalance, I guess you can say. Um, that allows the creative writing to work. So. Yeah, um, if you want any any kitchen production merchandise or any like albums or anything like that, um, definitely I have a distributor called Stagecraft. Um, it, you go to stagecraft.com. Um, you can get kitchen production T-shirts, Alice Poet stuff, um, albums. It's all it's being updated at the, at the moment, but. It's definitely, you know, we're, we're, right now it has a lot of kitchen production stuff on there, but um, we're we're um, we're gonna be pushing the LS Poet stuff on Stagecraft as well. So if you guys are looking for like just T-shirts, anything like that, music, you can get it at Stagecraft.com. Um, if you want videos, I'd say YouTube um, LS Poets, um, and then like us definitely like the Facebook um, LS Poets. That way you can get all the latest. I just want to give a shout out to Muro for um, definitely helping the community, helping us uh, move forward with the arts community. Do really appreciate it, and uh, everybody check them out at Muro.com.
Felt that they waste vintage clothes and Mohawks and whips up for the chase Our people's beautiful even when they stray Cause we turn ghetto into the beauty even when they say If you rock the flip flops then you was a vibe If you rock a red shirt then you was a slob And people talk the shit man like it was a job And if you're deep in the ride then you was the mob Now you ashamed to be mong, I just don't understand it Stereotypes don't define you, don't be quick to brand it Play with the cards you've been handed, you ashamed to be mong, you crazy Y'all's is beautiful. <laughs> My name is Pluggy. I am uh, auditioning for a part in Grand Torino. <laughs> Actually, I did go. Oh, you you auditioned? Audition? Yeah, I auditioned in front of My name is Spider. Dude. Huh? How, how, My name that, is Smokey. How was that experience, dude? dude, it was like hell of people. Bro. Like, I want to do the gangster part. I think I could have done Tope better than Tope. Oh. Oh. Tope? <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! Come on, guys! Please, I'm really, I'm man. Cute. Yeah. <laughs>